Welcome again to Lakeshore Focus, a weekly show highlighting the key issues, important events, and interesting people in our region. I'm Keith Kirkpatrick. When listening to the radio, don't you often wonder what the voices look like, act like? Are they as goofy or sophisticated as they sound? Well, I was able to grab a couple of the guys from Lakeshore Public Radio just down the hall to let you see what they really look like and learn a little bit more about the radio biz. Let's welcome to Lakeshore Focus from Lakeshore Radio, Tavis Buchan, who is the Vice President of Radio Operations, and Tom Maloney, who is the Production Coordinator. So what's this like to be on TV instead of radio? Well, first, are you surprised this is what we look like? Yeah. Right? It's it, not what you picture. It, it's amazing. You are so much different than the cardboard cutouts they have down the hall. We need some. Those are actually, I think, those are, those are older. Those um, are, yeah, we've, we've, we've grown a little yeah. bit over the last couple of years as uh, the Lakeshore has been around. But yeah, I guess the mask is off and sure. we, are, so, we are the so faces are. on the voices. Well, that's interesting because people can see you guys on, if they go on the website, right? So oh, yeah. You can see those, those still pictures. And but, through social media as well now. Okay. Yeah. So do people comment on that much or do people really plug into that listening to you? Do you think they go into social media onto their phones and try to look and see what you guys are doing in the We studio? hope so. That's the goal. We're working pretty hard at it to make sure that they do. But usually when you're out in events, you'll... you'll and out in the community, you'll catch someone who listens. They're, they're, they're definitely a dedicated listener, but might not be that engaged through social media or the web. And you're never what they pictured in, in their head. Do people come up and say that to you? Like, so this is what you look like? If I'm wearing a Lakeshore shirt, sometimes, you know, I get the occasional, oh, you've got a voice for radio. And, you know, they kind of put two and two together versus looking at me and even, you know, really recognizing who I am because like Tavis said, you know, radio really is a listening medium and to put pictures with radio, well, that's what we call TV. And you know, that's, yeah. is that what we call this? Yeah. yeah this is TV. All right. It's, so mind. it's, it's, it's interesting. And you know, like, like Tavis said, people really get a kick out of it because they've always got this sort of this, this image in their head of what does this person that I listen to every morning, every afternoon, every evening on the weekends, what do they look like? Who are they? They, they don't really know. They kind of have, again, this, this self-created image. Yeah. Right? yeah. So have you guys done much TV before at all in your career or any TV or? Not, not before I came to Lakeshore Public Media because being a public television and radio station, you have an opportunity to kind of cross over. But, but no TV for You've me. You've always been in radio. Always been in radio. You too, Tom? Uh, I studied radio at Ball State but they also had a TV side there as well. So I made my TV debut almost a decade ago, uh, being on college television and news broadcasting down there. So the cameras aren't foreign to me, they're just different. So, so how, did, how did your career then take off into, into radio and not TV? If you were um, kind of both. I guess going way, way back, um, my dream job was always to be the White Sox uh, broadcaster on the radio side of things. And that's originally kind of what geared me into radio, and that's what I went to Ball State for, was to study radio. And studying radio required a news background. And taking so some TV classes. Taking TV classes as well, but radio has always been my passion since, I've, uh, since I was a little kid and knew exactly what it is I wanted to do. How did your career get you into radio? Well, I knew that I wanted to be in, in this medium as a, a pretty young man in the early days of, of college. And if you want to do something, you got to go to where that's happening. So I signed up for an internship program that would at least get my foot in the door. And then I just tricked them into keeping me. And uh, I kept going. And that was like 14 plus years ago. It was a good so, trick, right? Yeah, <laughs> still tricking them today. So, so it's interesting, you both got into this in college. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, did you get those comments made? You got a great radio voice. Did you have people say that to you before you decided to go on radio, or did you develop the voice for the medium? Yeah, I never really, really got that, that, you know, you've got a great radio voice, you should get into radio. I never really did, but you do develop, your personality develops. And it is, though, you, you want to be yourself. You always want to come across as yourself, but in a way it is public speaking you're speaking professionally and so there is a trick to it and you kind of learn that as you go on and that's i think um again something that i had heard at an early age uh, especially you know when i'm a kid and answering the phone and people think they're talking to my dad versus actually talking to me you always had a lower voice always had a lower voice um it sounds a lot better when i don't sleep for a couple of days 
uh, gets you know a little more, I guess, radio sound, if you will. But you know that's something as well too with uh, with public broadcasting, public radio that we do here at the Lakeshore. You don't have the you know the wild, zany, over-the-top FM DJ sort of sound. So it really is kind of honing and creating what you put over the airwaves because while it's not entirely you know your personality all the time, but it's still part of your personality. And it's you know again, it's not that guy who. You know, sounds like he's having a blast 24-7 and it's always a party in the studio. And it's also not the guy who's, you know, in the overnights who's trying to lull you to sleep as you're listening to, you is know, it a more jazz news, music. Is it a more newscaster? Is there a difference between kind of a newscaster sound and a talk show host? Sure. I mean, sound? when you're reporting the news, if you're a newscaster, you're reporting the news. You're doing it with authority and you're just getting the facts out. If you're hosting a talk show, you're more engaging. So it's more conversational. And you have a more inflection in your voice and sure. that, that kind of thing. So is this what you guys sound like all the time, talking? How do you, how do you talk at home? You walk in and go, hi, good morning, everyone. How's it? Yeah, no, I'm using doing? my what radio voice cereal? right now. When, when I go home, it's like, hey, hey, everybody, I got a fat stack of wax. Let's go ahead and spin some records. <laughs> no, it's, all, it's all pretty normal. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so what is just your, what's your normal talk? I'm, I, think I'm, I think I'm doing it right I now. I think you are, okay. yeah. Uh, this, is, this is Pretty close to mine as well. I don't know that it's really any different than you know in a conversation like I'm having now with you, as opposed to you know being on a microphone. It's, sure. it's it's actually interesting. I can tell a little bit of difference when you guys kind of move up to the to. I'm going to give you really. It's kind of an occupational hazard, I would guess. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because I'm asking you a question. We're in the same format you're using right. on the radio, so you've almost got to kick into the radio. Well, let me give you an answer to that. And that's that's, that's your job. You're doing your job. Right. So, yeah, you, you kick up your performance level a bit. It's your job voice. Are you guys both married or you got no, relationships? Nope. Or, I mean, Not so, married. So. I've, I've got a girlfriend that I've been tricking the last uh, five years or so, uh, almost five years. We've got to be careful about saying you're tricking. with you know, so TV, she's you're, probably yeah. going to see that. Yeah, she'll she's watch see this. this. Yeah, she that's, that's not a yeah. good thing. But that's on record. But does she ever say, don't use your radio voice on me? Or? Um, not really. Uh, I don't think she's <laughs> or maybe ever she said, says whatever says that. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I don't right. know. She, normally, it's just telling me to shut up. <laughs> You know, this personally, this this profession can be hard on relationships because it is you know, long hours. You know, you're all, always doing odd things. It's not a nine to five job, right. right? Anytime you turn on the radio, you expect it to be there 24 right. seven. So it has destroyed. I'm going to die alone as long as I'm in this business. <laughs> You know, it, it's interesting, too, because you're right, because I hear your voices all the time, and I think people think you must be there all the time. But you guys are here a lot. A lot, sure. Right? Yeah. We are. Um, we're, we're actually, uh, the next pledge drive that we have, we're going to try to get a couch so we can sleep on something other than the floor in the, uh, the studio when things so go wrong. So you can get rid of the foam mattress that's on the floor in there right now? That's yeah, the, that's, well, Tavis that's has the get. foam mattress. I use the air mattress, which, unfortunately, there's not enough duct tape to hold it together anymore. So, you know, it kind of throws kinks in the back. But you definitely have marathons, like during the pledge drives. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you're just going wall to wall. You know, I, I, I know a lot of people, and this will be posted on, on the website, as you guys know, and I, I assume a lot of people will maybe come and look at it, particularly yeah. who aspire to get into the business. We talked about this a little bit before. You know, how much time do you guys put in in an average week? I mean, in, in the radio career, what do, you, what do you put in? Well, it's, you're definitely putting in your mandatory 40 hours a week right. and then some. Usually, if, if you're in this business, you're doing it outside of work mm -hmm. as well. If you're listening to the radio, you're kind of working in your head. Or now with social media and, and web and technology, how it has advanced, you're definitely taking it outside of work as well and constantly working. I assume when you're younger too, when somebody calls and needs you, you're going to be there and show up. You and that's, show up. I've gotten those phone calls at mm -hmm. you know one o'clock in the afternoon on a Saturday, and I've gotten those phone calls at two o'clock at night on a Tuesday. And you know when that phone rings, you come in and you assess problems, be they you know satellites going out of phase. That's radio jargon for you know satellites just not being properly lined up. Maybe there are computer issues. A computer freezes and shuts down because, like Tavis said earlier, everything is digital. Everything is done with a computer now. So just like sitting at home on your laptop or on your desktop, when that freezes and goes down, you know we have that same problem. So we got to get in here and make sure everything's you know copacetic in that regard. But it's uh, it's definitely 
24 seven plus because okay. it's okay. Uh, it never everything, ends. everything's digital and so forth. So I'm curious, why is this in your office? I found this in your office. <laughs> yeah. And if everything's digital, why are we still well, monkeying around with this wrench? Everything is, is digital, but occasionally we do still have personnel problems. Yep. And if we like to handle them on our own instead of taking them to HR. This is a, this is a management tool. Mm, yeah, so yeah. So it's really not used for the mechanical it, side. It works pretty well. Yeah. So, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ha I may have to remove this from your office. I'm not sure. You can borrow it. I can borrow it? Yeah. yeah there, there we go. It's, now, I should know the answer to this question, but do we broadcast all night long? 24 7. We okay. do. What, what's on, I, I have to admit, what's on from midnight to 6? Depending on the night. Oh, um, I know what's on from, from 5 in the morning because we start broadcasting news and stuff in the morning. Uh, over the course of the last, I think, month or two, uh, we've been working on really incorporating more music outside of, um, I guess, the the music that we've played before, we're really looking into getting more public radio music shows on the weekends. And so Friday nights, Saturday nights, Sunday nights, we've got that format of music playing in the overnights. And we're really working towards expanding that and going all the way across the broad spectrum of the weeknights to, you know, so when you turn on the radio station, we're not just like every other radio station where yeah. you're listening to music and you're listening to promos and IDs, but instead you're hearing, you know, public radio voices. Yeah, you're yeah. hearing public radio programming that, you know, it, you're learning, you're enjoying the music versus just kind of having it as a, a background noise. Since you have no personal life anyway and yeah. you wake up in the middle of the night, <laughs> yeah. do you like turn on the radio to see if it's still playing or what's going on? Well, do do that? I, don't, I don't turn on a physical radio anymore. Just use my phone, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, but but yeah, occasionally I'll check in, and what's great too is, like Tom was saying, it varies on the day, and that's the great thing about the the public radio genre and format is you can be real eclectic. I've worked for plenty of commercial stations. I've worked for a classic rock station. And you pretty much know what you're getting every time you turn it on. You're going to get some Led Zeppelin and some Pink Floyd. And There's uh, nothing wrong with Led Zeppelin. No, 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 no. <laughs> he wasn't saying that. He was just saying you never know right, what you're going right. to hear next. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you just have, uh, we have plenty of eclectic programs. We have a lineup that offers something for everyone. So, so what's the greatest challenge for you in your career or doing what you do? What's, what's the most challenging part of that? I think... Staying, staying on the float, air, staying on the air. I mean, it's you know we've you been keeping your job or is that <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we've we've seen you know radio stations across the country. People do come and go. They, oh yeah, they really do. There's a high turnover rate in this industry, and like Tavis said, you know, kind of he you know he likes mentoring people and you know kind of teaching them about the business. And that's one thing that you have to learn about this business going into it is that it's. Uh, I don't necessarily know that it's as cutthroat as it used to be, but it's definitely tougher because there are less and less radio jobs just because, you know, mm -hmm. radio is a, uh, it's becoming more and more localized. And you see that with the clear channels and MS communications of the world where they're really selling off those subsidies and those smaller radio stations right. around the, uh, the United States. You hear that same program in 14 different cities. Exactly. Yeah, and so, you know, for radio now, our, our biggest challenge is to really make it more locally personalized and not just providing programming that you're going to hear on, you know, for us, every single NPR station or, you know, for a station that's not a public radio station, like you said, you're not going to hear that same program in, you know, 14 to 20 different right. cities. You're going to hear people from your area and really discussing and talking about topics in your area. Yeah, connecting with the community, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Making sure that you can stay relevant and that you can continue to provide a service that people will keep coming back to you for. That's where you gotta really stay topical, you gotta keep up. We want, it's, it really is customer service. When, when you turn us on, you're doing it for a reason. And hopefully you'll, you'll leave that experience having learned something, be more informed, enlightened, inspired, and we wanna continue to, to provide that service to listeners. I want, want to also apologize. Since we're on TV, we can only supply you with water because I noticed, you know, when people are on the radio, you guys are able to do other kinds you, of beverages back there. You've seen my drawer. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, and I was like, wow, that's kind of nice. You we got to get new locks yeah, yeah. installed Say on Say what those. do you want from the fridge for yeah, you right? start the show, right? Stop by after. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you both, you know, maybe a, a most embarrassing moment or a, 
on the radio, something like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I did that, or oh my gosh. Every time the microphone turns on and my yeah. voice is there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I've never, I've never sworn on the air. I've never used profanity on the air. Uh, or, so you've so, never slipped. I've never, never slipped. slipped. Really? I've never slipped, but it, that, that happens. That's why you have a delay. Yeah. Right? And I've seen it happen. Is there a I button you push when that happens? Yeah, there is. Something? Okay, yep. yeah. there's a magic button. It's so, a big red button but, that says push. So that wasn't embarrassing. So you've never done that. But never you, done that. Have you had an embarrassing moment where you're like, yeah, you know, it's hard to, to when it's live radio, it's hard to pick your, your most embarrassing moment. It'd be like mm -hmm. trying to pick your most embarrassing kid. They're all embarrassing, <laughs> right? It's live radio. <laughs> That's a good point. So, well, how about this? How about a, a moment where you go, I cannot believe I screwed that up so bad. Um, I remember uh, years ago I was doing a, I was doing a sports update and Tavis was hosting uh, Lakeshore Drive and there's a minor league baseball team that the Gary South Shore Railcats play. Uh, they are the lemurs. Well, here I am, I'm a 20-something radio professional who's never actually seen the word lemurs spelled out and it looks a lot like lemurs, like the <laughs> hockey player, Mario Lemure. And so, uh, I proceeded to give sports updates for, um, I think it was one day for about the 4 o'clock and the 5 o'clock, the next day at the 4 o'clock, and then the 5 o'clock, Tavis calls me out over the airwaves and says, Tom, I think you mean lemurs. Yeah. And at that moment, the light bulb sort of went off, and it was, you know, it's one of those moments where you're like, you know what, I can't take this back, I just have to go ahead and enjoy it because, you know... It's live. No it, it's, it's live. There is no going back. So the Railcats for a day and a half played the Lemures. Now, it, it didn't bother you to know <laughs> that every time you were doing that, they were all sitting in the other room listening to it, laughing, and then he did it again. Oh, they, see how many they, times they, he'll they do it before it. he they figures it out. It. you got to have fun with each yeah. other. <laughs> and there's so many buttons. There's so many buttons, too. It's, it's really easy to hit a wrong button. I've been reporting the news and went to hit a button for a sound bite, and it's been monkeys screaming. That's never appropriate. No. <laughs> so, so have you ever done one that was pretty darn funny? You know, where it's like you were talking about something, you hit the button, and it was something, whoa, my gosh. Yeah, well. Or was it the monkey screaming? Yeah, yeah, I've done that, but <laughs> I've also hit, I've hit sirens, and then you never won't really want to do that because people are listening in their cars, and next <laughs> thing you know, they think they're being chased by the buzz, right? <laughs> okay. That would be uh, pretty bad. Is is there is there something you hope hope never happens besides saying the sure. wrong those, word? Those seven words from George Carlin. Are uh, we down to Are we down to seven? Have, have is that still exist? I don't know that the there's FCC. more leniency now. Yeah. You won't hear that. Are we down in to public three or, radio. Are we down to three or four? Because it seems like some words have. I'm not. We're not going to try to figure out what those are. No, but, probably but not. It seems like yeah, I'm there have been guessing. Were, yeah, there have been words that seem to be on TV more, and mm -hmm. so you hear them in radio. I mean, I don't, I don't you know don't have that list? Uh, it's not like we, we, we don't have the, uh, the list printed out, though. Maybe we could probably get that in the studio, I think. Um, or we could just, you know, play George, play George Carlin's clip at like midnight every day and say, these are the words you will not hear on the station. Now, since, this is, since this is public radio, yeah. can you get by with that? I don't That's know. That's interesting. Can. You know, you just don't really, you just don't really do it, <laughs> yeah. you know? But, you know, Public radio doesn't always have to be dry. It's very, it can be very entertaining as well. Right. I mean, you should also, I mentioned that you should be informed and enlightened and inspired. Well, you should be entertained as well. We have great shows, very popular. I'm sure viewers would recognize, wait, wait, don't tell me. Very right. popular quiz show. And you can have a lot of fun in public radio as well. What is the difference? I mean, what, what makes public radio public radio? Well, I think that's the that first question I've asked. You guys actually stopped to think. You had sure, good yeah, sure. I mean, I, I think you you're servicing the public. You definitely you're servicing the local community. You aren't out to get advertisers or or commercials. Make make the the most commercially viable station. You want to make it the best possible full service station to your audience. And that's I, public radio. I think that's key is it's full service. It's not just the stuff that, you know, you know the most people are going to listen to. You have to remember that, you know, he, especially here in northwest Indiana, we've got, you know, such a wide mix of 
ethnicities and locations and job types, everything from the Gary Steel Mills to, you know, farms in South Lake and Porter counties to, you know, thriving cities, Valparaiso, Crown Point, you know, we've got these different entities in Northwest Indiana and we really are a melting pot and that's something that, you know, with the Lakeshore and with public radio, you have to remember, your your audience is a melting pot. It's not just the same, you know, demographic that constantly listens to the sports talk radio show in Chicago, and they're not listening to the top 40 stations coming out of Northwest Indiana and Chicago. They're, they're really listening for content that they're not going to get elsewhere. You're not going to get, you know, that localized style in a Time Magazine article, just like you're not going to get it when you're turning on and listening to the stations over the state line, whether they're on TV or radio. You know, listening to you guys, you're both really proud of what you do, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we both stuck with it. It's our careers, it's our passions. It's our passions as well as our profession. But, but, you, but you're really proud of the content too, I can tell from, you know, it's not like I'm just proud of what I do, but you're proud of what this station does. Yeah, you, you build it. You build it so you get to see results of what you've done, your accomplishments. I've, uh, I've been here since the beginning. Um, I'm, I guess I, can, I should get a button, maybe, or a badge that says I've got the longest tenure on the radio side. How many years is that? Uh, it'll, be, uh, it'll be six in December, so I'm yeah. roughly five and, what, a quarter, five and a third. Um, I don't really do math so well as I do talking. But, you know, seeing this station really start up from day one where I was you know, sitting in front of computers, learning programs that I never in my wildest dreams thought I'd be working with, to all of a sudden now when it's like, you know, I flip the radio station on and it's like, pardon the pun, but it's like clockwork that when, you know, 12.01 and 7.01 hits, NPR News is going to be there, you know, when, when you're listening and it's like, okay, three o'clock, all things considered is going to be there. And, you know, knowing that I've set that up and I've, I've created this, this thing, this breathe, essentially this breathing being because that's what a radio station is for a lot of people because it's, it's there for them all the time, providing the information, providing the content and, you know, it's been created. And then Tavis came on, I think just about a year later and, you know, he's brought the station up from where we first started and really brought a lot of great expertise from the West Coast, which he argues is actually the best coast. Um, well, we need to straighten him out on that. Yeah. We're, we're down to the last couple seconds, so just one thing you wish people knew about this station that they don't. That a couple seconds. It's 89.1 FM on the dial. <laughs> Good ad. Something we're always on and always here. I like you. It's hard to believe that you guys are a few words, but that's the fewest I've ever heard you say. But thanks for being on the show because this has been really interesting. Thanks. We'll have you back Thank again. You. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. I've been trying to figure out when I first heard about public radio and began to listen. It's been at least 30 years since my discovery. I do recall how I immediately fell in love with the thoughtful commentaries, the interesting stories, the fascinating perspectives. There were reports on international events, business strategies, global politics, and the everyday lives of common people. I was so tired of hearing about celebrities, sports, crime, petty political fights, mundane local events, and repetitive updates on news that was not interesting to me in any way. Public radio seemed committed to presenting news that educated. It felt like the programming was generated by reporters who sat together, sifted through important issues, and then decided to look at those issues from a different perspective. As I listened, there were so many moments where I thought, wow, Huh, and that's so interesting. I remember arriving at home after my drive from work and talking to my wife and kids about what I had heard on the radio. The sharing of my thoughts and its resulting impact on me must have transferred to my kids. They are now 29 and 31 years old, and they each will share what they recently heard on National Public Radio. I want to say publicly that I am dismayed by the criticism that is leveled at public radio stations for being too liberal or biased in what is presented. When I hear that attack, I'm reminded of history where people criticize educators and leading thinkers for presenting fact-based analysis and theories that explain how the universe operated, evolution occurred, diseases spread, or the mind worked. 
Journalism that is based on an objective presentation of information that has been researched thoroughly is so important. And that's what we hear from NPR. We are fortunate to have a public radio station located here at the south end of Lake Michigan. We have a station that brings great national public radio and excellent local programming. When I'm in my car, 89.1 FM is the lakeshore is what I have tuned in. Besides listening to the crazy characters like Tavis and Tom, who are on the show today, we have so much more to offer. I strongly encourage you to support this television and radio station when pledge drives are on. Our members are what keep us going. Thanks for watching today. Are you immediately searching to make a pledge? Or are you ready to send us an email about today's show? Your thoughts are important, so email us at the address on your screen or reach us through our website. Join us next week for another Lakeshore Focus. I'm Keith Kirkpatrick saying, make a positive difference in our world today.